So let's get you some unique perspective on this because Nick worked in the Tampa market as a forecaster for a few years mm -hmm. and you know that this is a very big deal. The potential for some damage is, is really yeah. there. Yeah, you know, the storm track, the way it's set up, Tampa Bay, it's, it's so interesting because, uh, for instance, Irma made a patch just to the east, right? So place Tampa on the west side, it was an offshore wind, so they had a negative surge. If this storm takes a path to the west of Tampa, places Tampa on the eastern side, we have the onshore flow and it will provide a significant storm surge, could be up to five to 10 feet in Tampa Bay. The last time there was a major hurricane that had a direct impact for Tampa, direct landfall was back in 1921, and that storm put downtown Tampa under eight feet of water. This storm here is on its way. It's intensifying pretty quickly. Hurricane hunters are flying nonstop around the clock right now in a Hurricane Ian, sampling the storm. Right now, the Hurricane Hunters are on the northwestern side. This is a live uh, track of the Hurricane Hunters and seeing the pressure continues to decrease and the winds continue to increase, which is a sign that this storm is strengthening quickly as it moves across near western Cuba. Going into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico is a major hurricane, likely category four, and then it will be slowing down and weakening as it nears the Florida coastline. Uh, but certainly if this path uh, places stamp on the eastern side, it will be significant when it comes to storm surge and a lot of people are under evacuations right now in the Tampa Bay area. And Tony, there's always this saying, uh, you run from the water and you hide from the wind. And mm. that's what folks are doing right now in Florida. Interesting. Mm. All right. We know the track it for us. Nick, thanks.